Welcome back to this slide show. Um, uh, previously, we quoted the Gospel of Judas, this bestseller of the uh, Gnostic world. Um, now, in part two on the Gnostic trail into India, we will look at the Acts of Thomas, um, which is a widely read book in the Martoma canon. Um, it relates us the facts regarding Judas Thomas and his trip to India, and up to the second act gives um, a credible line of events. Um, I'm tempted to simply call both men in these two books just Judas, um, mainly because um, the characters are uh, identical, and also um, because of that interesting initiational moment which Judas received from his teacher in the Gospel of Judas actually repeats itself in a similar manner. The apocryphal New Testament, the Acts of Thomas, begins with uh, telling how the disciples were assigned to the different continents for spreading the word, and accordingly Judas Thomas got India. Um, just as the story goes, an Indian merchant and ambassador walks by uh, and uh, meets Jesus who is surrounded by uh, his groupies. Abanese, the uh, uh, merchant, asks Jesus if he happened to have a carpenter to sell. Jesus, of course, is willing to sell his servant Judas Thomas praising him as a craftsman, uh, a fine deal is made up, and uh, Jesus gets paid. Uh, Jesus then comes up to Judas uh, and tells him the great news. You don't worry, Judas. Here, take your price. Uh, this is your three silver coins. And off you go to India. On this first century Roman world map, India is positioned fairly correct. See the distinguishable shape of the subcontinent uh, south of the Himalayas. Some sources say that um, he actually left uh, uh, from Basra, uh, the harbor of Basra on the Persian Gulf. Um, this map with the red line shows the Red Sea exiting uh, into the Arabian Sea towards India. The Romans discovered a direct shipping route to India in 47 AD. They ventured using the monsoon winds and it made it possible to navigate one round trip with the coming and turning of the rain winds. So trading and communication speeded up between the two worlds. According to the tradition, uh, Judas arrived to the city of Musiris in the year 52 and lived 20 years in southern India, dying in Chennai in 72. The acts suggest he was involved with politics around the Tamil rulers on the east coast and out of conflict of interest with the um, local priesthood, he was killed. Musiris was located near the modern town of Kodungalur, somewhere in the outlet of the Peria River. The town and harbor were flooded and destroyed in 1341. There is a Malabar Catholic church on the approximate location at Azikode Jetty where the first temple was supposedly built by Judas Thomas. Nothing remains of the original, uh, except a relic, which is the enshrined right arm bone of Judas Thomas. After being buried in Chennai in 72, his uh, bones were exhumed and with other relics were returned to Mesopotamia in 232, 3rd century. Then in 1258, the bones were transported to Ortona, Italy. And finally, juggling around in crypts, his right arm bone returned to India in 1953.
After his arrival, Judas rose quickly to fame, becoming a spiritual superhero overnight. As the book tells, he was noticed to be a subject with extraordinary qualities and was invited at a royal marriage party to demonstrate his magical powers privately for a close circle of nobles. During his performance, his body started radiating with light and it changed shape, turning into Jesus, who communicated and spoke to the audience, telling the newlywed couple that they should not beget children because they would cause the destruction of the kingdom. In essence, this uh, supernatural transgression resembles the transformation already seen in the Judas Gospel, where the words of Jesus a warning against incest or pertained a pure vision into the future, we just speculate. Uh, the fact is that Judas Thomas immediately gained the full support of the ruler and was provided building material for his temples. The second temple went up about 28 miles north of Kodungallur. There seems to be almost nothing remaining from the original structure, with the exception of the ritual candle poles for offering. When looking at the present church, it looks as if the portico in front of it were in addition, but uh, this roofed gathering place, which looks like a barn, is actually the sacred Keralan Shri Kovil. This shrine is prescribed with accurate proportions and it occurs in all Hindu temples in the area. So does the pond behind the church. Therefore, we may assume that the location of the Shri Kovil suggests um, an accurate site uh, for the second temple. The present-day Syrian Catholic church building is a later addition, although it may have replaced an original structure centuries ago. The third temple was located um, at Kokkamangalam, near Chertala, on the backwaters. He probably did uh, plenty of carpentry uh, while building these uh, Shri Kovils, and um, probably also wondered if this place had already been paradise itself. When Jesus shows himself, people prostrate and uh, call him a real guru. It is said that um, several hundred thousand took the water baptism. The original faith, and as the faithful call themselves, is the Nasrani. Today they are an ethnic community. Uh, the main and oldest ritual in worship is the Korban, which is a Hebrew term for um, devotional offering and it's practiced morning and evening daily. The uh, church today is Malabar Syrian Catholic, but there is an uh, other uh, Roman Catholic church nearby, and they too claim the heritage of Judas Thomas. Before we get to the fourth temple at Niranam, we have to see this pearl of a temple at Tiru Vidankode near Takkalai in Kanyakumari district. This is the thing. This structure is in its original shape and form. Uh, maybe only the roofing was changed through the millennia. You see a nice little Shrikovil and a temple of stone. The structure itself was already a 300 years old and dismantled Hindu shrine, reassembled for Thomas. Over the entrance we see a um, stone relief um, depicting an offering sermon, um, like uh, this one at another location in Hindu context. 
Um, the main thing is that nowhere on the original structure there is um, a cross relief or the fish. Um, it had nothing to do with the later uh, incoming uh, Christianity uh, as claiming uh, St. Thomas' work. Niranam is located inland and uh, in ancient times it was accessible by channeled waterways. Um, Roman travelers mention the uh, city. Here is the present day church with um, the original candle poles. Surprisingly, there are carved stone pillars and other temple elements on church ground belonging to the original um, structure. Um, here they are. Um, we get an idea how this complex looked like. Uh, see this block, uh, a threshold element and uh, a pillar. Um, the threshold is identical with the neighboring Vishnu temple's threshold. Um, and as we walk around in this uh, Hindu temple, we are able to see the style and space the Thomas temple may have looked like. Um, the pillar itself uh, returns at this school building belonging to the church. There is a reconstruction of a replica on church ground. The carpentry around the window panels is impressive. The fifth temple at Kota Kawal near Paribur is back to north, which means Judas Thomas ran the shuttle taking the boat back and forth. He was popular. The only thing here remaining of the original is a part of the southern wall surrounding the compound, they say. The other object is the circumcised lingam of stone crowned with a wrought iron cross standing at the front gate of the chapel. This lingam is interesting from the perspective on the evolution of religions. Just as the ancient words defta or divin signify the highest divinities in the Latin world, uh, in the Christian context, it was subdued and made into the devil. So here too, a sacred Hindu creation symbol, God's own reproductive organ, is mutilated, then chastised, showing the levels of distorted interpretations by consecutive religions. About half a mile from the Thomas Temple, there is a synagogue in Kottakawal. Uh, now abandoned, uh, the congregation immigrated to Israel. This building carries the Keralan sacred style in order and uh, shows this stucco in the main prayer hall over the altar. It's what we may say unorthodox. The wheel is the Hindu-Buddhist wheel of life, symbolizing samsara, the endless and recurring flow of existence, and those three crescents are tantric symbols, which we find in North Indian iconography from Nepal to Afghanistan. The Indian world 2000 years ago was full of spiritual kingdoms. Um, they were experiments in social orders, uh, regulated societies with mind, heart and body devoted to this wonder called life, guiding man to the highest insight. The brightest of these in the uh, contemporary India then uh, was a kingdom around Kashmir where Hinduism, Mahayana Buddhism, pre-Rabbinic Judaism, Zoroaster and um, others lived in a fusion. 
fundamental rifts between spiritual ideologies occur first around the 6th, 7th centuries and it's about from then we start using the word religion with the meaning we attribute to it today. The last spiritual kingdom in the tradition following the Indian Golden Age is or was Tibet. If you think the three wise men may have been on a successful reincarnation search, finding the king of a since then forgotten spiritual lineage. Tangasari Fort was established by the Portuguese in 1505, then uh, it changed hands, first the Arabs captured it, then the Portuguese have retaken, and it became Dutch, and then later British. Contemporary maps this uh, Portuguese and then uh, this Dutch map from another angle shows the location of the uh, Martoma uh, St. Thomas Church. Sometimes in the early 1800s, the sea swell reshaped the coastline and the temple sunk. It's located somewhere here north of the present-day lighthouse of Tangasseri, about 10 to 20 feet below sea level. The eighth uh, temple was at Kayalpatinam, but I didn't uh, reach the location two, three miles south of town. There could be some goodies laying around. There is a church out there, they say, but the original temple disappeared long time ago due to land erosion on the coast. However, we have seen the locations and the activities of Judas Thomas lasting 20 years. When he died, the communities continued their lives in the Indian world, participating in the worship of local and Hindu deities in appropriate manner, adding just one more figure to the pantheon. The very first Catholic visitor to India, Pantheonus from Alexandria, arrived in 192, that is 120 years after. He was a supporter of the campaign against the Gnostics, and to his horror, he reports back to Clement about the Gnostic route taking ground in India with Judas as culprit. Luckily, Jesus had never come back yet. The Church Fathers by then had uh, claimed total authority in spiritual matters, behaving as thugs, vulgarizing the teachings, calling best friend a traitor, wife a hooker. A religion, a lie, got adopted in strict sense of business. By the 5th century, in 410 AD, the episcopal hierarchy of the East Syrian Church was fully organized, and from then on, not one single sheep were allowed to leave the hundred. The moral challenge in our times of the free worlds is then perhaps an aesthetical one. How to guide and guard our civilization from returning to a dark age where the ugly, the evil, and pathological physiognomy is the standard. The generating force of mechanism and the histories of terror, useless and mean, in creating and maintaining religions are well documented and have been known to mankind since ages. Ideologies, religious or pseudo-religious ones, are enforcing a collective projection onto this matrix, the fabric of reality surrounding us, and they manipulate the individual. Secular systems can be adjusted. The religious ones seemingly had entered a new phase today, redefining the word religion as a serious health issue. For the Gnostics, and for Jesus anyway, religion had always been a mental case to study and overcome. What to do? Here is the end of the slideshow, and we say goodbye with Buonarroti's wonderful parable. Those who have the eye, they see. And wink.